Well, the holidays are here, and that doesn't mean we have to stop doing genealogy. In fact, today, what I have for you are five genealogy things that you should be doing over the holidays. Hi, I'm Lisa Louise Cook. Thank you so much for stopping by the Genealogy Gems YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be talking about five genealogy things that you could be doing over the holiday. So let's jump right into it. There's always time for genealogy. And the first thing that you could do is stimulate conversation. Put some things around the house that actually foster conversations about family history. Chances are you're going to have family and relatives uh, coming by, or you'll be going to their house. If you're lucky, they'll be cooking and doing the dishes and you won't. But uh, either way, wherever you are, you're going to be with family. That's a great time to have those conversations. And it doesn't have to be necessarily with only the oldest members of the family. Everybody in the family has history, their history to contribute to the story. And in 50 years, these kids around the table, that's going to be family history too. So everybody's story matters. So one of the things that you could do is have items around the house. Uh, in the past, I've shared on the Genealogy Gems YouTube channel how to make a family history Christmas wreath. I've done these in a couple of different forms. I've got one of them hanging over at the fireplace uh, this Christmas. And it's a great conversation starter. People are always kind of surprised and they do a little double take when they see it because they notice that amongst all the Christmas ornamentation, there's also family photos and actually little trinkets that I've kind of tucked in there um, that have been handed down to me or that I received through the family over the years. Uh, things like a charm off a charm bracelet, a button off of a military uniform, so many different items that really represent the ancestors that are featured in the wreath. Uh, I've also done this with my own Christmas stocking. I made one with all the women in my family. And you can watch my YouTube video here to learn more about how to crazy quilt your own genealogy Christmas stocking. And when people see these things, it oftentimes will lead to questions, conversations. Uh, something else that will generate conversation around the house is uh, Christmas candy. So a long time ago, gosh, back in, I think, 2007, when I started the Genealogy Gems podcast, I talked about these candy bars that I made. And well, I didn't make the candy bar, but I actually custom designed the label that went around the candy bar and that featured family history. So I'm going to have links to all these ideas in the video description below. It's not too late. You could run out to uh, the store this afternoon, buy some big chocolate bars and whip up some of these and print them on your computer printer. Also, you could have table prompts. So if at a minimum, you could have a little card by each place setting and you could have one question that generates an answer that kind of gives a little bit of family history. That leads us to the second thing that you should be doing over the holidays, and that is recording the conversations. Now, of course, let everybody know that you'd like to do this, ask their permission, but it's so simple to just grab the voice memo recorder app on your phone and tap record, and then just let the conversation flow. You've already got your conversation starters. Why not capture it in an audio form? So don't miss that chance. I'm so happy that at a fairly young age, this actually occurred to me. And of course, it wasn't so easy back then. You couldn't just grab your phone and do it. But I had my little cassette recorder and I would turn on that cassette recorder and I've got uh, interviews with my dad and my grandpa and just uh, all kinds of folks in the family. So number two is to record conversations. Now, the third thing that you can do, and it's not too late for this, is to mention your interest in family history in your Christmas cards. If you're like me, you might wait to the last minute to send out your cards. But one of the things that you could do is just reinforce with particularly the cards going out to your relatives that, hey, you're still actively interested in family history. 
just mentioning that, maybe give them a link to a, an interesting video or a document that you found or your online family tree, that can help just kind of plant that seed in their mind that when they find an old photo or a document, they will think of you. Once the word gets out that you're the family historian in the family, it's amazing how things come your way. Uh, this has certainly worked out for me, and I think people really appreciate that there is somebody who cares, who will take care of that information or that stuff and it cleans out a closet for them, right? So um, get the word out and this might help um, just ignite some new finds that you hadn't made so far, something that was buried in the back of a closet or a memory that hasn't been thought about for a long time. And uh, it helps facilitate making new strides in your family history research for the coming year. The fourth thing that you could be doing over the holidays this year is have genealogy fun. And there's lots of different ways to bring family history and genealogy into the mix and have fun with your relatives. I know sometimes you mention that you're interested in genealogy and the eyes start to roll and people go, oh gosh, you know, that's just so boring. But of course it's not. It's only boring if we make it boring we can make it really fun. And I have several ideas for you. The first one is get them nostalgic. So if you want them to be interested in family history and have fun with it, start with them. Head to Google Books and go check out the Sears Wish Book. There are several different issues out there for free. It is so much fun to go through these catalogs and remember the old toys that you used to want and you tear out the pages and give them to your mom or your dad and say, oh, I want this for Christmas. Uh, but there's other places where you can check that out too. Head to Ancestry.com. They have a huge collection of old Sears catalogs and uh, they span quite a range and you could get in there and probably find a year close to the year that you were a kid. This is so much fun and it's really fun to be able to show the kids and the grandkids the kinds of toys that you used to play with and that you dreamed for that Santa would bring you. And if you don't happen to find a year that falls kind of within your childhood, either at Ancestry or Google Books, just try a basic Google search. So a fun way to do this would be to go, go to Google and type in, you know, Sears catalog and then put a time frame. So if, uh, you know, for my childhood, it might be 1963 dot dot 1970 or 1965 dot dot 1975. Give yourself kind of a range there. And that dot dot in between those two years tells Google that Whichever page it's going to return to you, it has to have a year somewhere on that page that falls within that range. So that really ups your chances. And then rather than slogging through all of those search results, click the image results. That will really quickly show you which of these websites actually have pages from the catalogs. So going through old catalogs is just a ton of fun and brings back tons of memories and nostalgia. Something else that you could do is you could offer up to the folks around your Christmas table or your holiday table the opportunity to dig into their old yearbooks. I did this once with some friends and oh my gosh, people got laughing. It was hysterical and they just loved it. They loved that I was pulling up again their own family history on my phone. So head to websites like Ancestry and MyHeritage and go check out those old yearbooks. Just ask the folks around the table uh, for the approximate year and location where they went to high school. And of course, you probably have several years to choose from. They may not have their senior yearbook in there, but you might have their sophomore. For some folks, you'll have a photo from every year. So that's, again, just a lot of fun to kind of help people around the holiday table understand why genealogy and family history is so much fun and that it starts with them. And the other thing that you could do again to make it really fun for our fourth to do item here over the holidays is to head over to MyHeritage and check out the AI time machine. 
So my last video that I did here at the Genealogy Gems YouTube channel was all about me going in there and doing it for myself and, and using the AI time machine. I had been a little reluctant, seemed kind of silly, but when I went in there, oh my gosh, it was a ton of fun. I ended up making Christmas presents for all of my son-in-laws. So I gained two son-in-laws this year and I have a total of three now. So one of the things I did was I took photos that I had of them and uploaded them and then found uh, photo images that the AI time machine generated from time frames in history that really interest them. My son-in-law, Brandon, uh, loves, you know, old 1940s aviators and World War II history. And uh, my new son-in-law, Michael, really is interested in military history and, and civil war. So there were just so many options. I'm hoping to, after I give them the presents, so shh, don't tell them, I'm going to give them framed versions of these pictures. So I can't show them to you right now, but I am going to do that in a future video and show you specifically how I made those projects. But go check it out. I'll have a link to the AI Time Machine video that I did last week uh, down in the video description below. It's a super fun activity and again, helps all of your holiday guests imagine themselves throughout history. Okay, so, so far this holiday season, we have been stimulating the conversation. We have been recording those conversations. We're reminding our relatives and our Christmas cards that we still do genealogy and family history and to get in touch with us. We've also been making sure that everybody learns how to have fun with genealogy and family history and really just kind of break through that barrier where they act bored and show them how much fun it is and how it really does apply to them. And that brings us to our fifth and final thing that you could be doing over the holidays this season. And that is to pick one genealogy project that you want to do in the new year some type of research project. What's your brick wall? What's that one piece of information that you've really just been aching to find and you haven't and you kind of put it away and said, oh, I give up on that. Now's the time. There have never been more databases, indexes, libraries, digital collections, so many resources for us as family historians. And um, they are out there and you never know what it was that you were looking for may have just come online two weeks ago. There are new record collections all the time. And even if it's not online, it may be that the library or archive that has that has just improved their search feature or has just added it to their index. I noticed that the National Archives just launch their brand new website. We're going to be talking about that here soon. And um, that is a great example of the fact that technology and accessibility and all that just continues to evolve. And that means there's hope. So what I want to recommend is sit down and in just a quiet moment, maybe just sitting by the fireplace, drink a little eggnog and think about what is that one research challenge that you want to take on for yourself personally in the coming year. Being specific and focused about your research goals will help you develop a terrific research plan, which will then help make you much more successful. Again, I'm going to have uh, links and resources to articles and videos that I have that will help you do that, kind of develop that research plan and uh, make sure that you can really achieve your goals in the new year. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you take me up on these five items that you could do over the holidays. And I wish you the very best. Uh, here at the Cook Ranch, we are celebrating Christmas in a big way. I'm so excited to not only have all the kids and all the grandkids, but actually 
as of this morning, I got a call that my daughter is about to give birth and she's headed to the hospital this evening. So um, we hope to have a granddaughter here, a new addition to the Cook family very, very soon. Uh, God bless you all. Have a wonderful holiday season and a very happy new year. I can't wait to help you out with genealogy in the coming year.